Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video we're looking at question 3 of the Oxford Maths Admissions Test from 2019. A challenging question, one that really requires a bit of algebraic dexterity and some uh, intuition about uh, graphs and things as well, but in some ways a question where if you apply you know, relatively standard techniques from uh, A-level you can make a lot of progress with it, so I think it's one that uh, you should be able to do well at. Don't forget, I'm putting all of the questions from this uh, paper into a playlist that'll be finished soon, and there are playlists for all of the 2018 paper and a lot of the 2016 and 2017 ones as well, so check out the website uh, linked below uh, to see all of those, everything totally free over at the Mathsaurus website. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, really helps me get this content out there and make sure that you are notified when I put the next part of this video out. Okay, so in this question we've got uh, a, b and m positive integers with uh, 0 is less than a is less than b and this diagram below sketches a parabola with equation x minus a times b minus x and also the straight line y equals mx. So they've given us uh, a picture of all of those curves and we're told that this straight line is a tangent to the parabola and we've labelled these two regions uh, r and s. Okay, so as we do this question I'll keep that picture up um, and uh, in part one it says for c greater than zero uh, firstly evaluate the integral between zero and c uh, of uh, x times uh, c minus x so this shouldn't be uh, too hard we can just multiply out and get cx minus x squared uh, dx and then integrating term by term I've got cx squared over 2 uh, minus uh, x cubed over 3 between 0 and c uh, so just plugging those numbers in I get c cubed over 2 minus c cubed over 3 and if you like minus 0 uh, and then we get c cubed over 6 so um, should be able to get at least one or two marks in this question here and then it says without further calculation explain why the area of region s equals b minus a cubed uh, over 6 so clearly we've just done this integral so we would want to uh, think about uh, maybe why it's equivalent and uh, excuse my bad axes here but uh, if we think about what this area would be it would be very similar it would go from 0 to c uh, and what we've just worked out here is that that area uh, would be c cubed x where this is y equals x times c minus x and what we can see is that clearly uh, if uh, c equals uh, b minus a uh, then you know this area uh, is just equal to uh, to the area of s right it would just be same curve shifted to between a and b instead of between 0 and c uh, so that area is uh, so the area of s is uh, c cubed over 6 but with b minus a uh, in place of c okay so you just need to say that reasonably clearly there now in part 2 it says the line y equals mx uh, meets the parabola tangentially as drawn in the diagram so that m is equal to uh, root b minus root a uh, squared and uh, really this is just a pretty algebraic uh, question um, so we know we know that uh, but you know, if you're not quite sure where to start with these things just follow your instincts of uh, you know so it says we're asked for the meeting points of the parabola and this curve so it makes sense to investigate the equation you know mx equals x minus a times b minus x this is going to be where those uh, equations meet so if we so that where the lines meet um, the x coordinates will satisfy this equation so if we just multiply this out we get mx equals bx uh, minus x squared minus a b plus a x and now we think well what do we do with that well if it's a tangent we know there's only going to be a single intersection of the line and the curve so we look at this and say we've got a quadratic equation and we'll get one intersection where this this quadratic has a repeated root i.e. where the discriminant is zero so if we rearrange the quadratic into its standard form let's put everything 
onto the left hand side so it's got a positive uh, x squared uh, here and then we'll have x squared uh, and once I've brought all the terms over to the left I'm going to have a plus b minus m times x uh, plus a b and that's all equal to zero so you can check my uh, algebra there but um, not too difficult You're just going to be careful with all the signs in this question and we want to say the discriminant of this quadratic is equal to zero so the b squared minus 4ac uh, here well uh, b squared is a plus b minus m squared I mean you could okay, it's minus all of that technically but you know if I put the minus inside here and then square it it's plus so I can just write that and then 4ac is uh, 4 times 1 times ab sorry if it's a bit confusing to use um, you know when I say b squared minus 4ac I mean the usual a b and c in the quadratic not the a and b in this question and uh, so we've got that, that equals zero. Right, okay, so uh, now we just have to do uh, some algebra. Now, one, you know, there's one or two expansions that are really useful for the map paper and for step papers if you're thinking about those as well. And here's one of them, that the generalization of the of expanding a quadratic when you've got more than two terms. Okay, you could just multiply it all out and collect it together, but we get a very similar structure, right? So I get a squared plus b squared plus m squared, i.e. the square of all the terms individually, and then I get two times each of the product, each of the pairs, right? So I get two times a, b, I get two times minus a, m, and two times minus b, m, right? So this is a generalization of just multiplying out a plus b all squared. And then I've got minus 4ab equals zero. And so I've got this plus 2ab and minus 4ab uh, that are going to uh, combine here to give minus 2ab. Uh, and then minus 2am minus 2bm and so we've got a reasonably um, nice looking uh, sort of result here and we want to know uh, what the value of m is here right so I've now you see got another quadratic here in m that I can try to solve uh, for m so if we just rearrange the term so it's a quadratic in m in its standard form we get m squared minus 2 times uh, a plus b times m and if you look at the other terms we've got here we've got a squared plus b squared minus 2ab so I could just write that as plus a minus b all squared uh, equals 0. All right so I want to uh, solve this for uh, m so let's just apply the quadratic formula here um, so we've got uh, 2 times a plus b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared so that's 4 a plus b squared minus 4 uh, a minus b squared all over 2 again just applying the usual quadratic formula being careful not to mix up the a's, a's and b's and things right uh, so I've got a factor of 2 top and bottom here so I've just got a plus b plus or minus and then in here uh, the 4's in the square root will cancel with this 2 and uh, so I've got uh, and I've got uh, okay let's write it all out a squared plus b squared plus 2ab minus a squared squared uh, minus 2ab um, and so I've got a plus b plus or minus the square root here and uh, everything cancels here apart from a term uh, 4ab so this is uh, a plus b plus or minus 2 times the square root of ab so we're almost there um, now if you look at the form of the answer here it wants root b minus root a all squared and uh, so you know this if you think about it would be it, with the plus solution here it would be root a uh, plus root b squared and with the minus solution this would just be root a minus root b squared okay so we just have to choose between these two roots and now we just have to think about well what other um, you know what other line could we uh, get here that would also be a tangent and if you think about it if you sort of the other way we might get a tangent is if I think about this parabola going down here and I had some very uh, you know I had, I had a, a steeper uh, line here let me try to 
use a straight line here. Right, if I had a straight line that sort of went down in this went down in this direction, sorry I might be going off the page here, but you can kind of imagine if I extend this line, then somewhere down here, you know, I could get a, a tangent down in the bottom left uh, quadrant, right? So actually this is the this would be the steeper one that would have the you know so it would have the larger M, right? So you just need to make some argument here to say that uh, you know this case uh, corresponds to the smaller uh, m, so I don't want root a plus root b squared. I want root a minus root b squared. Uh, so uh, m is root a minus root b squared, or obviously, it's, obviously, once you've squared it, it doesn't make any difference. So uh, root, root a minus root b squared is the same as root b minus root a squared, uh, as required. Okay, good. So, um, in part three, we say now assume a is one and b is equal to beta squared, where beta is greater than one. Given the area of R equals this expression, show that the areas of R and S are equal precisely uh, this equation in beta is satisfied and say, why is there a solution to beta, uh, beta to star in the range beta greater than one? Okay, well, let's try and establish this this formula first. Um, so we're given that the we're given the area of R, right, and we know that the area uh, of S, right, is um, going to be b minus a cubed over six. Right, that's what we worked. That's what we've got from part one. And substituting in uh, a equals one and b equals beta squared. This is beta squared minus one cubed over six. Okay, so the area of R uh, and S are equal, okay, uh, when this expression here, beta squared minus one cubed over six, uh, that's got to be equal to uh, the thing we've been given here, two beta plus one times beta minus one squared over six, okay? So obviously we can cancel out uh, the, the six is here and if I then move everything to the left hand side I get beta squared minus one cubed minus two beta plus one times beta minus one squared equals zero so you know doing these questions in a reasonable time is partly just a case of making sure that you do the algebra as efficiently as possible so rather than multiplying everything out here um, I think I'd like to notice that beta squared minus one is beta minus one times beta plus one, so I can put some cubes on here, and then I don't have to do quite as much uh, multiplying out, perhaps, because I can spot that I've got a factor of beta minus one uh, squared here, and uh, then here I'll be left with beta minus one times beta plus one cubed, uh, and then minus two beta minus one equals zero. Uh, so all I've got to do now is uh, multiply out this uh, cubic here. So, okay, let me go up here. So I've got beta one, beta minus one squared. And again, being able to do this uh, quickly is useful. I'd, I'd recommend knowing how to multiply out one plus x cubed or its equivalent um, uh, straight away, but you can apply the binomial expansion or something if you don't remember it. So it's b, beta cubed here plus three beta squared plus three beta plus one uh, minus two beta uh, minus one equals zero. Uh, so beta minus one squared, and then I've got to multiply it all by beta, say so beta to the four plus three beta cubed plus three beta squared plus beta, and then minus beta cubed uh, minus three beta squared minus three beta minus one minus two beta minus one equals zero. Now hopefully I haven't made any mistakes and this is all going to work. So I've just got a beta to the four here. Let's cross these out as we go. And then I've got three beta cubed uh, minus beta cubed. So that gives me the two beta cubed. And then I've got three beta squared minus three beta squared, so they cancel out and there's no term in here for beta squared. Then I've got beta minus three beta minus two beta, so that gives me the 
uh, minus 4 beta and then finally the 2 minus 1s give me the minus 2 so that's 0 uh, as required and uh, now we've um, done that algebra pretty efficiently I think okay um, we need to doing this paper in time right now it says um, explain why there is a solution beta to this equation in the range beta greater than 1 now this is perhaps um, slightly tricky depend you know there's a in the second year of A level you do uh, numerical methods for solving equations but the idea here is that we can uh, see you know you might not have seen this idea sort of as formally but the idea here is that you know if you look at when beta equals 1 okay um, then the, uh, the the right hand side of so the the beta to the 4 sorry plus 2 beta cubed minus 4 beta minus 2 that's going to be 1 plus 3 minus 6 that's going to be less than 0 but for example if you take beta equals 2 or any large value of beta here right, I actually get here 16 plus 16 minus 8 minus 2 so it's bigger than 0 so this quartic in beta uh, somewhere between uh, 1 and 2 is going to cross the axis and there's going to be there's going to be a root okay so uh, right so what does this mean okay we'll obviously get a solution to the equation here when beta equals 1 because the beta minus 1 squared is uh, is 0 but then at some point this quartic is also 0 in between 1 and 2 so I've actually been slightly more precise than the questions asked for here I've shown that the root is between 1 and 2 and um, but uh, but we can actually you know uh, so but obviously that implies that it's for something greater than 1 right? something between 1 and 2 is necessarily greater than 1 you could also just say like when beta gets large clearly this expression is is large and positive as well and then you'll just be saying that there's a root larger than 1 somewhere okay so in the last part here it says without further calculation deduce that for any a greater than 0 there exists a b greater than a such that the area of region s equals the area of region r so if we just think about the picture that we've got here and the case we've been dealing with um, you know we've shown that when a equals 1 and b equals beta squared that uh, the uh, you know the, the there's, there's a value of beta that makes these two areas equal so the question is when I change 1 to a what happens well um, if we just think about this as a horizontal stretch uh, then uh, you know if, if I stretch this to a and then I, I would just stretch this to a times beta squared then um, uh, then the scale factors are going to work out and the area of R is still going to be equal uh, to the area of S okay so um, so we've just applied a constant scale stretch a scale factor to stretch out these uh, areas and so the areas of R and S will also um, stretch out by a certain error factor um, there's one slight uh, technicality here which is that when you apply that stretch the parabola now might not have um, the leading coefficient of x squared being minus 1 so to, for a really technically precise answer you might also say that you're going to apply a stretch in the y direction or a squash or something to make sure that the uh, this all still remains valid but in the mark scheme it does say here that they weren't expecting people to comment on that as long as you talked about the scale factor argument uh, you'd get all the marks there so I hope that was useful question 4 is going to be coming soon as as well as the rest of the paper so please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'm going to try and get the rest of this paper out in time for the 2020 exam or if you're watching it in future years then hopefully it is already there for you.